We're inside the Henry Hartner exhibit, uh, which is inside the Henry Hartner carriage house here at Longleaf. This was originally a two-story building and it was his carriage house at his house in Alexandria. Mr. Hartner was the founder of sustainable forestry here in the south and he did many wonderful things. He was the, the guy that figured out that we could grow southern yellow pine as a renewable resource. So this was his in-town office. Mr. Partner was also a bit eccentric in the fact that he never owned an automobile. He traveled exclusively by horse and carriage or he had someone bring him somewhere in their automobile. So this was his carriage house, downtown Alexandria. His house was given to uh, the hospital in Alexandria and for years it was the hospital. It's now the site of the Cabrini Hospital in Alexandria and at that time the house was demolished. The carriage house, the second story was removed, which was the servants quarters and it was put out at Indian Creek Lake for a number of years. His grandchildren, the Blake brothers, uh, underwrote the restoration of this building and the moving of it from uh, Indian Creek Lake here in the restoration of the office. So far as we can determine, this is a pretty faithful recreation of what his in downtown office looked like. Uh, the walls are finished in walnut and cherry and the floor in many different kinds of hardwoods and pine, including in the wonderful inlay work that's done here on the floor. It, it's just worth a preservation for its own sake but it's even more worth preservation for the memory of Mr. Hartner because the present forest industry in Louisiana entirely depended upon the work that he did in forestry. And he was not an educated forester, he just grew up in the woods. And so Louisiana and the income in East Texas and Louisiana and Mississippi and Alabama and Arkansas so much of it depended upon the research that he did and he partnered with uh, Yale University and Duke and several other universities in bringing their forestry graduates to Louisiana to work with him in the summers. They had their summer field camps down here. And so sustainable forestry owes everything to Henry Hartner. And this is our tribute to Henry Hartner. We're inside uh, to show you his office. In addition, we've used other things in here to show you the role of forestry and forests in Louisiana. We've got another room behind me on sustainable forestry and behind me is our Camp Claiborne Museum. So we're going to go there next. Camp Claiborne, six or seven miles north of here, it was a temporary arming post established by the Army in 1940 and abandoned in 1946 after the war for several purposes. Uh, they trained artillery here primarily. They also trained forestry battalions here and at the mill at Longleaf. The mill at Longleaf was important to the training of forestry battalions that went in and used the forests of Europe and Southeast Asia to cut down, make lumber in temporary sawmills and build barracks and other buildings as our armies advanced to build housing and quarters for the army. A lot of these forestry battalions were trained at Camp Claiborne and used the mill facilities here at Longleaf to learn about handling wood. The two biggest divisions, there were a lot of divisions that were here, the 34th Infantry, which fought in India, I'm mean, not India, sorry, Italy, fought in Italy, was one of the earliest uh, armed, part of the armed forces engaged. Also, the two airborne divisions, the 82nd and 101st, were commissioned here at Camp Claiborne. Uh, the 82nd was an outgrowth of the All-American Division of World War I. It was split in half and the 80, 101st Airborne was formed out of the other half. Uh, these are the troops that landed in Sicily. The 82nd first landed in Sicily and both of them landed on D-Day in Europe. Uh, they landed uh, at uh, Arnhem for the advance through Holland, the attempted advance through Holland and the 101st actually ended the war at Hitler's Eagle's Nest at Berchtesgaden in Austria. So these people served, uh, if you 
know the book and the movie, The Band of Brothers, the 101st originated here at Camp Claiborne. The sergeant here is on the steps going up to what would have been the servants' quarters when this was a two-story building. This particular room was actually the carriage house itself. The two rooms between me and Mr. Hartner's office were a kitchen and a bathroom for the servants. And they would fix him meals when he was working here. It has doors on both ends. The carriage would be brought in, horses would be unhitched, and they would be carried out the other side, and the carriage would be parked in here. This was his carriage house. We've converted it to this museum. Uh, our present museum Doug, director, Doug Rhodes, had a large part in this along with his brother. They have collected artifacts from Camp Claiborne for years. And Camp Claiborne was, is part of the Kisatchee National Forest where Doug worked for most of his lifetime career with the Forest Service. So it, it's a tribute to Camp Claiborne. It's a tribute to the men who are here on the Louisiana maneuvers. Uh, they, it's also a tribute to the many Army railroaders that trained at Camp Claiborne. The Army built a railroad between Camp Claiborne and Camp Polk, the Claiborne and Polk Military Railroad, which got the nickname the Crime and Punishment, but uh, it was a tough railroad to run, but they trained troops to run trains in the Army fashion so that when they went to Europe, they went to Southeast Asia, they went to Africa, the military rail service that provided transportation all worked the same way. And these troops were also trained here at Camp Claiborne. So this is our tribute to Camp Claiborne, to the Army Military Railroaders, the Army Military Foresters, the paratroopers, and the regular Army soldiers that were trained at Camp Claiborne. All told, a half a million of them were trained here in Louisiana.